It's party. Good afternoon, everybody. Thank you for being here in City Hall. The September 17, 2018 City Council meeting of the full council will come to order. It's 2 o'clock p.m. I'm Bruce Harrell, Council President. Will the clerk please call the roll? Bagshaw? Here. Gonzalez? Herbold? Here. Johnson? Here. Juarez? Mosqueda? O'Brien? Here. Sawant? President Harrell? Here. Five present? A note for the clerk that uh, we've gotten a note that three council members have been somewhat delayed at an event that took place over the break. And so uh, they should be here momentarily. And, and because of that, we do have a presentation that we're really excited about this afternoon. Um, and we may do that after public comment in order to get our council members that are presenting it uh, here and situated. So uh, they should be here in five or 10 minutes and we'll just uh, keep going down the, the order. Now, uh, so let's move on to the introduction and referral calendar. So at this point, I will move to adopt the introduction and referral calendar. And I believe uh, a few council members, Council Member Herbold, would you like to start off with a potential amendment? You got it. Thank you. Um, I move to amend the proposed introduction and referral counselor, uh, calendar by uh, introducing appointments 1139 through 1148 and by referring them to the Civil Rights, Utilities, Economic Development and Arts Committee. These are various departments, appointments from the Departments of Seattle Public Utilities, Customer Review Panel, the Commission for People with Disabilities, the Arts Commission, and the Women's Commission. I could read them if you like. Uh, please. Uh, the appointments are entitled uh, appointments of Robert E. Coleman, Rodney A. Schroff, and Pooja Shah as members of Seattle Public Utilities, 2018 through 2023 Strategic Business Plan Custom Review Panel for term of confirmation to July 31st, 2021. Appointments of David F. Layton, Maria L. McDaniel, and Jessa Timmer as members of Seattle Public Utilities, 2018 through 2023 strategic business plan custom review panel for term of confirmation to July 31st, 2020. Appointment of Christina M. Sajek as member Seattle Commission for People with Disabilities for term of confirmation to April 20th, 2020. Appointment of Sean L. Bickley as member Seattle Commission for People with Disabilities for term of confirmation to October 31st, 2020. Reappointment of Sharon N. Williams as member Seattle Arts Commission for term of confirmation to December 31st, 2019. And lastly, appointment of Vivian Lee as member Seattle Women's Commission for term of confirmation to July 1st, 2020. Very good. Is there a second to the amendment? Second. Okay, it's been moved and seconded to amend the proposed introduction for a calendar stated by council member uh, Herbold, any other questions? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it, and the calendar is amended. Council, is, oh, sorry. Council Member Johnson, would you like to proceed? Sure. Um, I would also like to move to amend the proposed introduction referral calendar by introducing Resolution 31841, entitled Resolution Requesting Reports from the Seattle Department of Transportation, Department of Construction and Inspections, Seattle Center and uh, identifying transportation projects in the vicinity of Seattle Center Arena and describing the process for administering the Seattle Center Arena Transportation Management Plan and by referring it to the City Council for consideration on September 24th, 2018. And if I get a second, I'll speak to it. Second. Please do. Um, briefly, this uh, resolution, which if adopted on today's introduction and referral calendar, would allow for us to consider a uh, council resolution next Monday alongside our arena transactional documents that we will have in front of us next Monday. And this resolution allows for us to put in place some conversations about the buckets of funding and the different transportation projects that will be built in conjunction with the arena. We are currently continuing to work with the mayor and her team and the various departments on language associated with the resolution. So it is, uh, it has, uh, been uploaded, I believe, in Legistar, and me walking it on today allows us to consider it next Monday, but um, will continue to evolve over the next couple of days, um, assuming that this resolution is adopted and placed uh, on introduction referral calendar for us to consider for next week. Very good. Any other questions or comments? 
Councilmember Beckshaw. Uh, thank you, uh, Councilmember Johnson, for doing this. And I know my office has reached out to yours just to make sure that we've got clarity around the multimodal approach for bicycles and pedestrians and whatever transit, but to have clarity about where the investments are going and who's paying for what. So if you'll just make sure that my team is also included. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Very good. Any further questions or comments? I want to thank you and Councilmember O'Brien for looking through all the complexity of the investments we're about to make uh, over around Key Arena. Thank you. All those in favor of the amendment, please say aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it. And next, uh, Councilmember Bagshaw. Yeah, thank you very much. I also move to amend the proposed introduction and referral calendar. We're introducing resolution 31840 entitled a resolution providing an honorary designation of 2nd Avenue North from Harrison Street to Thomas Street as Seattle Storm Way and by referring it to the City Council for consideration next Monday on September 24th, 2018. I don't think there's too much um, here that we need to discuss, but if you have any questions, I'd love to address it. Very good. Is there a second? Second. Thank you. You weren't even here. <laughs> I'm here now. <laughs> so um, it's been moved and seconded to amend the proposed interest referral calendar stated by Councilmember Bagshaw. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it. And Council Members uh, Gonzalez and Mosqueda have joined us. We did let the viewing public know your engagement over the lunch hour, and we let them know you were running a little late and you had let us know. So thank you for thank you. being here. And I believe Council Member Swan will be joining us shortly as well. Um, and we did announce. Uh, we'll probably uh, strike what I said earlier about doing the presentation after public comment. That was just sort of uh, uh, filibustering. Uh, filibustering. So we'll uh, we'll stay in the order of our written agenda. Right. And I have two other short amendments. Oh, okay. Councilmember Beckshaw. Thank you. I've um, moved to amend appointment one zero seven six. So that is um, that would come up at the time when, when we present them. We okay. okay. Great. Thank you. Thank, Thank, you. Thank you. you for the alert. Okay, so I think we are prepared with an introductory referral calendar that's been amended. So uh, I will move to adopt the introduction referral calendar as amended. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it. Very good. Now, if there's no objection, today's agenda will be adopted. I don't believe there are any changes there. So hearing no objection, the agenda is adopted. There are no minutes for approval today. Uh, so let's move into presentations. If Councilmember Gonzalez has caught her breath, she will proceed with the uh, exciting proclamation to the World Ultimate Club Championship winners. Thank you, Council President. Um, it is my pleasure to present two separate proclamations today. I'm going to do them um, uh, separately so that uh, each, each of these teams gets their deserved moment in the light in chambers today. So the first one will be uh, to honor uh, Seattle Riot. And I'm gonna go ahead and read the proclamation into, record, into the record since they're not that long and um, they deserve um, uh, to be recorded in this fashion. So whereas the sport of ultimate, formerly known as ultimate Frisbee, has a deep history in Seattle and is celebrated by athletes and fans around the world, and whereas ultimate, which was recently recognized by the International Olympic Committee and is eligible for participation in the 2024 Summer Olympics, has a strong tradition of gender equity, mutual respect, and fair play while relying upon the spirit of the game motto, and whereas the sport's highest level of competition in the women's division is played at the club level and the pinnacle of the sport is the World Ultimate Club Championships, which occurs every four years, and whereas the WUCC was recently held in Cincinnati, Ohio, USA from July 14th through the 21st, 2018, where 128 club teams from 36 countries participated, and Seattle Riot won a gold medal in the women's division. And whereas Seattle Riot went undefeated at the 2018 WUCC in dominant fashion, facing 10 opponents from seven countries and capturing gold with an impressive 15 to eight win over Medellin's revolution. And whereas Seattle Riot founded in 2000, defended its 2014 WUCC championship to win back-to-back -back gold medals, complementing its previous WUCC gold medal in 2002. And whereas Seattle Riot led by captains Paige Sopper, Julia Snyder, and Alyssa Weatherford, and coaches Andy Loveseth, Gwen Ambler, and Roar Rory Tickham espouses the shared values of excellence, trust, and love. 
Whereas the Seattle Riot Program in its 19th year continues its work to improve and grow the game and spirit of Ultimate on and off the field, now therefore the Seattle City Council and the Mayor of Seattle do here, hereby recognize Seattle Riot for its 2018 World Ultimate Club Championship on this day, Monday, September 17th, 2018. This is when we applaud. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so I, I think uh, members of Seattle Riot are with us today. Is that true? Yes. Okay. Come on up. Um, you guys, y'all get to uh, accept the proclamation, and then we would. I would ask Council President if we can suspend the rules to allow uh, representatives of Seattle Riot to share some remarks with us. I would absolutely love to suspend the rules to hear from Seattle Riot. Um, I'd like to say, as you're gathering your okay. positions, that. Uh, I first became aware of sort of ultimate frisbee back in 2010. <laughs> I'll wait for everyone to hug because no one's paying attention to me. <laughs> oh, Had a good are. story here. <laughs> and I'm listening. Whoever would like to share a few words, but first I get to finish my story. <laughs> was I want to thank Councilman Gonzalez for bringing this uh, to our attention. I first became aware of what I'm calling Ultimate Frisbee back in 2010 when my daughter played in, in the set of public schools at Madrona. And I have to tell you, I've seen a lot of sports, I've been around a lot of sports, but it is, it is one of the most exciting things to watch. I mean, it is just phenomenal, the athleticism and the teamwork. It's just, uh, it's, I'm just very proud of what you, what you all have accomplished. So uh, please share a few words with us. We're pleased to honor you this afternoon. Um, well, thank you very much for this proclamation and, and uh, moment in the light. It's, uh, yeah, I think this is a, a year in particular that it's very exciting to be a woman um, sports team um, competing in the women's division, honored by Seattle and bringing home a championship. I mean, Seattle Storm doing the, you know, the same on a slightly different level. Um, and I would say in general, it's amazing to be supported um, as athletes in Seattle um, across the board. I think all of us feel really well supported by the community, um, by fans, and the sport in general is known throughout the world actually as a, a hotbed here in Seattle with leagues from elementary school, middle school, and high school as sort of a unique um, place um, in, in the sports history actually. So we are incredibly honored to represent the sport in Seattle and um, thank you very much for, for this honor. Thank you. Thank you. All right, I'm gonna to proceed to the um, second one because it's ultimate all day for the next uh, few minutes. Um, so uh, the second proclamation is to recognize uh, Seattle BFG. Whereas the sport of ultimate, formerly known as ultimate frisbee, has a, has a deep history in Seattle and is celebrated by athletes and fans around the world, and whereas ultimate, which was recently recognized by the International Olympic Committee and is eligible for participation in the 2024 Summer Olympics, has a strong tradition of gender equity, mutual respect, and fair play while relying upon the spirit of the game motto, and whereas the sport's highest level of competition in the mixed gender division is played at the club level and the pinnacle of the sport is the World Ultimate Club Championships, which occurs every four years. And whereas the WUCC was recently held in Cincinnati, Ohio, USA, from July 14th to 21st, 2018, where 128 club teams from 36 countries has participated, and Seattle BFG won a gold medal in the mixed division. And whereas Seattle BFG went undefeated when it defeated 10 teams from six nations en route to a clean and efficient 15 to one gold medal win over Boston's Slow White, and whereas Seattle BFG, founded in 2016, has quickly built a world-class team and community, and in just its third season, BFG has achieved international success by winning a gold medal in its first appearance at the World Ultimate Club Championships. And whereas Seattle BFG, led by captains Alexa Kirkland, Lily Gu, and Tommy Lee, champions the shared values of positivity, process, 
uh, process and perseverance, and the program is eager to build upon its recent success with humility and a growth mindset. Now, therefore, the Seattle City Council and the Mayor of Seattle do hereby recognize Seattle BFG for its 2018 World Ultimate Club Championship on this day, Monday, September 17th, 2018. And I'd also equally ask for the rules to be suspended and provide them an opportunity to make some comment. But we can suspended. clap first. We'd love to hear from <laughs> And you all can make some comments later on. She's a Yeah. Hi. Um, we are also so proud and honored for this proclamation. Thank you so much. We felt supported by a lot by our city, and we've been really proud to represent the city of Seattle and the United States at Worlds this year. Um, we are also really proud to be taking home a gold medal representing the city of Seattle with Seattle Riot. Um, it's really cool that two out of the three divisions ended up with champions from the city. We thank you all for your support and um, we look forward to continue growing. We also want to honor all the, the players and the fans and supporters that have been with our team for the past three seasons. This win and anything that we do in the future are because of what everyone has put into this team. Thank you. May I ask you a question? May I ask you a question? Um, can you uh, just explain a little bit about, uh, is this a result of you had a lot of turnouts and people got cut off the team, or is it pretty much what's the, how does one join the team? Are there age restrictions on the team, or you just go for who's fit? You want to and council little president bit about wants the, to know where he can apply and do the, the tryouts. Yeah, well, a little bit about the rules. Year, so. how, how many people are on the, on the field at one time? How does that play? Just educate us a little bit about that. Uh, that last question was uh, how many How many players? people are on the field at, at, the, at one time? There are seven players from each team on the field at the same time. And you have to have so many women. There's a gender balance or something, right? Yes. You have to have so many. What, what is that? The current rules are that there are either four women and three men or th three women and four men on the field at the same time. I see. Um, and the gender rules are dictated by whoever ends up in a certain end zone. Oh. And what about the and tryouts? Uh, tryouts <laughs> haven't been announced yet for next year, but our team has had open tryouts every year. So there has been some turnover in our team and everyone who makes our team has to earn their spot every year. Mm. So Ooh, uh, anyone's invited All right. <laughs> uh, next year. All right. <laughs> I, just, I think I heard that there was no age limit council. That's president. what I heard. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. We're very proud of you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Councilmember Gonzalez. It's nice to celebrate champions. We've had three celebration champions here in the last uh, couple of days. So at this time, we'll take public comment on an item that appears on today's agenda or the introduction of referral calendar or the City Council's 2008, 2018 work program. And the public comment will be accepted for 20 minutes and speakers are limited to two minutes of public comment. And if uh, speaker's comment exceeds the two minutes, the clerk will turn off the microphone. And we ask that you begin your uh, comments by identifying yourself and the agenda item with which you'd like to speak. We have uh, some names here on the sheet, so I'll just call them out in order. First, we have Alex Zimmerman, followed by Betsy Pito. Zikai, my lovely concert. Hello, life. 
in human garbage. Anti-Semit, tax sucker, and killer. My name is Alex Zimmerman, and I will speak about something what is you today's choice for approving or human, Seattle Human Rights Commission. In my opinion, with Human Rights Commission for the last many years, absolutely uh, negative, 100%. Uh, all my eight trespasses, what is you give me for 900 days, I try what is this committee start investigate. No one positive word. For many years, eight trespass, for 900 days, what is I have, all trespasses, pure fraud, violation of council rules, and blah, 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 before U.S. Constitution. No one positive word. It's a very unique situation, guys. Why is this happen? Why you always, for many years, charged for Seattle Human Rights Commission are people who are absolutely identical what is you doing here in this council chamber? you good example for these children. Was this a child? I never see one man my age as my experience. Because you guys are pure criminal by definition. For example, you have this very simple two consul, like Gonzalez and Veres, so always, always harass me in every speech what is I have. And everything what is I doing is absolutely legal under all the rules and regulation. So how we can keep our people honest in this government who corrupt to the bones because you, by definition, potential criminal. This is exactly who you are. Sieg Heil, my Dory Führer. Thank you very much. Betsy Pito, followed by, is it Rayo Bur Bur Burgess from Casa Latina? Am I saying it right? That's our second speaker. Betsy Pito first. Good afternoon. My name is Betsy Pito from District 6. And I'll be coming down here as often as I can, um, giving you my two cents worth about the homeless situation in Seattle. And today I want to say that drifters are giving the homeless a bad name and that our failing to distinguish between drifters and the homeless slowly uses up our energy, yes. our funding, and our compassion. This new slogan, no one chooses to be homeless, you know as well as I do that that's not true. What is true is that the real homeless didn't choose to leave their last home. Some people do choose Thank you. Moving from town to town because they don't fit in or they're trying to find geographical cures. I was one of them, and like them, I was always willing and able to find a job and a place to live. Other people, the petty criminals, sometimes choose moving from town to town to stay ahead of the law. They're called drifters, vagrants, transients. These petty criminals have always lived among the homeless, they prey on the weaker homeless and on the mentally ill. They prey on residents. We should go back to giving the drifters the choice they always had, obey the law or move on. Heaven forbid that we go after excluded populations with vagrancy laws again. But letting people live outside the law, camping wherever they want, stealing and leaving behind human waste and garbage is wrong. Thank you. Thank you, Betsy. Uh, following Ms. Burgos will be Martha. She says Martha. That's just in your next. Okay. Hi. Um, uh, good afternoon. I am Rocio Burgos, and I've been a domestic worker since 10 years ago, almost 11 years. And I already shared my story last time, but I would like to um, share another story. There is um, Doris Anton, and she's a domestic worker also. Um, now I'm helping the domestic workers at Casa Latina. Uh, and she asked me to share her story. She, can, she couldn't be here because her son is sick. But um, she told me that when she was clean once, one time, um, the client just came to her and asked her to change the bed, uh, the bed sheets. And then when she came, um, she just saw the, 
the client, well, she, when she turned around, the client just pulled down his pants and, and she felt like very uncomfortable, so she didn't know you know what to do, and she just ran away. So during my during the years that I've been working um, as a domestic worker, I've been hearing a lot of stories. That's why it's very important for us this um, to come here and raise our voice and and share us, our stories because it is just amazing. Um, the things that um, we can hear and we can see, so it is just, it is hard for us. But with those laws and with this protection, we can feel better, much better now. And uh, we cannot be afraid anymore to work in, in the houses. Thank you very much and have a wonderful day. Thank you. Martha, would you like to share some words? You sign up just as Martha and then following Martha is Kim England. Hola, mi nombre es Marta. Hello, my name is Martha. Y soy trabajadora del hogar. And I am a domestic worker. Y vengo aquí humildemente a decirles unas palabras. And I come here humbly to uh, express some words. En nombre de mis compañeras y en nombre mío. In name of my coworkers and myself. Que me parece muy importante el respeto y protección durante las horas del trabajo. I think it is very important that we have respect and protection during our work hours. Y nosotras, las trabajadoras del hogar, necesitamos protección contra el acoso sexual. And domestic workers need protection against sexual harassment. Ya que la mayoría de mis compañeras sufren acoso sexual. Since uh, a majority of my coworkers, colleagues, uh, suffer sexual harassment. Eh, eh, uh, sufren de acoso sexual. Trabajamos como empleados en ciertos casos solos y es donde hay abuso. In some cases, we end up working alone, and that's where we might see sexual abuse. Y nosotros nos sentimos desprotegidas, solas, desamparadas, y necesitamos de ese trabajo, y aún así seguimos trabajando con miedo, pero seguimos. En nombre de, de mis compañeras, les pedimos humildemente que nos... Que nos Que nos den la... Um, aprueben una ley. ¿De qué? Aprueben una ley. Que aprueben una ley, que, que aprueben, esperemos que apruebe una ley que va a amparar y proteger a todos los trabajadores del hogar. Se los pedimos humildemente del con al concilio de la ciudad. Gracias. I didn't catch... I can't memorize everything, but basically that sometimes we were alone, uh, work alone or isolated, and we, uh, we give you thanks for uh, contemplating this Bill of Rights that would protect us against sexual harassment. And yeah, thank you. Thank Gracias. you. <laughs> Kim England is next, followed by Rachel Lauder. I'm Kim England. I'm a professor at the University of Washington. I study issues to do with paid employment and labor policies. My comments today relate to the two agenda items about workers. I supported the domestic workers ordinance passed in the summer. Thank you, uh, Council Member Mosqueda for your leadership. And I support the companion ordinance uh, related to the human rights code. And again, thank you, Council Member Herbolt for your leadership. The amended code will broaden coverage to include domestic workers and hiring entities. It is not straightforward to offer labor protections to domestic workers, but these homes are workplaces, and after all, these workers do care for the things we value most, our families and our homes. Please pass this ordinance, which will protect these workers from discrimination and harassment, sexual harassment in their workplace. In addition, I am concerned about the treatment of dairy workers in this state. All workers deserve lunch breaks, and to be paid for their labor. Wage theft is simply disgraceful. All workers, whether they are city council members, 
university professors, domestic workers, or dairy workers should, be able, should not have to face hostile uh, work environments, unsafe working conditions, sexual harassment, or physical and verbal abuse. And no worker should experience retaliation for addressing workplace violations that they experience. I urge you to adopt Resolution 31838, which reaffirms the City Council's commitment to workers, including our very important dairy workers. Thank you. Thank you. Good Following. afternoon, members of the City Council. I'm sorry, Rachel, uh, st start, don't start the clock. Oh. I just want to, I'll get some people in queue so they can get prepared. Uh, following Rachel will be Etel Stina Hauser and then Yolanda Carrion. Sorry. Though. My name is Rachel Lauder. I'm the executive director of Working Washington in the Fair Work Center. On behalf of the Seattle Domestic Workers Alliance, I want to thank the council, in particular Chair Herbold, for considering this legislation and expanding discrimination and sexual harassment protections to domestic workers. The Domestic Workers Bill of Rights was a groundbreaking piece of legislation, and we are pleased that the council recognizes there's more to do, both with this bill during the rulemaking process and at the soon-to-be-convened Standards Board. We also know that these new protections are meaningless if workers don't know their rights and employers are not held accountable. There are thousands of domestic workers in Seattle, and the first step in making these rights into reality is conducting outreach. And the Fair Work Center is nationally recognized for community-based outreach and education among low-wage workers, and we look forward to working with the council and the city to continue this work for domestic workers. Thank you for your consideration. Thank you. Mi nombre es Etelvina Hauser, miembro y líder de la Alianza Nacional de los Trabajadores del Hogar y Círculo de las Mujeres y We Dreaming Black. He, he trabajado en limpieza de casa y de cuidado por 17 años. Sufrí acoso, acoso, abuso sexual desde que era niña, pero nunca imaginé esto seguiría pasando en mi lugar de trabajo. My name is Etelvina Hauser, a member leader of the Al 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 National Alliance of Domestic Workers and the Circle of Women in uh, We Dream in Black. Yeah. Um, I have worked in the cleaning industry, um, home cleaning industry, and I have done this for 17 years. I suffered um, sexual harassment the, since I was um, a young child, but I never imagined that this will continue to happen in my workplace. En un día normal de trabajo, mi empleador me llama para llevarle papel higiénico al baño. Cuando abro la puerta, estaba desnudo, erecto, masturbándose, salí corriendo de la casa, muy desesperada. In a normal day at my work, uh, my employer called me to take him some toilet paper to the bathroom. When I opened the door, he was naked, erected, and masturbating himself. I ran away from the house, very scared. Trabajamos en cuatro paredes. We work in between four walls. Aisladas y en la sombra. Isolated and in the shadows. Como mujer negra, sufrimos un alto índice de acoso, abuso sexual desde una sociedad machista. As a black woman, we suffer uh, sexual harassment um, in the workplace, yeah. in, the, in the workplace, in the and in a society that is uh, very uh, womanizing against us. Estoy aquí right? para pedirles que por favor su voto, que den su voto. Aprueben este proyecto de ley para asegurar que nuestro lugar de trabajo esté libre de cualquier tipo de acoso. I am here to ask you to vote for this project, for this uh, law project, to avoid any sexual harassment in the workplace. Y doy gracias a ustedes por ser pioneras en esta lucha. And I thank you for being a pioneer in this, uh, in this fight. Thank you. So following Yolanda will be Maria Gonzalez and then Miguel Cuevas. Sí, mi nombre es Yolanda Carrión. 
Uh, My name is Yolanda Carrion. Trabajaba para una compañía de, para una planta lechera. Para un rancho. Para un... I worked at a dairy farm. Um, reporté acoso sexual en, acoso sexual le llamo yo, porque fue en el mes de abril. Um, para ese tiempo, uh, había dos hombres acosándome. Uno llegaba, me daba besos. I worked at a dairy farm, and since the month of April, uh, I, I call it sexual harassment, but because there's two workers that uh, harassed me. One wanted to give, kissed me. El otro llegó un día a la hora de mi lunch enseñándome pornografía desde su celular. Another one in my lunch hour showed me pornography in his cell phone. Um, lo reporté el acoso, el, el dueño de la lechería. I reported the harassment to the dairy owner. Uh, me dijo que había corrido a uno de los de uno de los trabajadores al que me había enseñado pornografía. He told me that he had fired one of the workers, the one that showed me the pornography. Para este mes de, de agosto pasado. But in the month of August last month. Um, yo pedí llegar, iba a llegar una hora más tarde a mi trabajo. I asked to be, uh, if I could get there to work a little bit late for an hour. Cuando llego me dice el supervisor de ahí, de planta. When I got there, the supervisor told me que ya no tenía más trabajo. that I didn't have any more work. Hay muchas personas que no se presentan a trabajar y siguen trabajando ahí. There's a lot of people uh, that don't even show up to work and they still work there. Lo miro como represalia hacia mí por haber denunciado el acoso sexual. I see it as retaliation for uh, speaking up about uh, sexual harassment in the workplace. Um, sí, y estoy aquí para pedir apoyo a um, nosotras como mujeres en la industria lechera por, para que no haya más acoso sexual. And I'm here seeking help um, for, and support for us, the dairy workers uh, in Washington State dairy industry so that we can stop the sexual harassment. Thank you. Gracias. Thank you. Hola, soy María González. Hi, my name is María González. Y estoy aquí por lo mismo porque he pasado acoso sexual en una industria lechera. And I'm here for the same thing because I have suffered sexual harassment in the dairy industry. Y acabo de ser despedida de otra lechería también por el mismo caso, por acoso sexual. And I just recently got fired from another dairy for the same thing, for sexual harassment, for speaking up. Y ya está, yo ya estoy cansada de estos abusos en la industria lechera, como de acoso sexual, como groserías. And I am tired of the harassment and the verbal abuse um, in the industry. Y también tengo otras compañeras que también son acosadas y estoy hablando no nomás por mí, por ellas también. And I know other women, uh, other colleagues in the dairy industry that are struggling with the same thing, so I'm not just speaking for myself, but for them too. Ellas aún no se animan a hablar, tienen mucho miedo, al igual que nosotros. Nosotros ya estamos sobrellevando esto, tratando de luchar, de parar estas cosas. They are very afraid, they are very scared um, to, to speak up. Um, like, like me, we're, we're going through this, uh, we're, we're speaking about it. Y no es justo uh, que eso estamos pasando, todas las, las mujeres que estamos trabajando alrededor de hombres que no nos respetan. And it's not fair for us women to be working around men that do not respect us. Y también estoy aquí para apoyar a mis compañeros de, las, de la Ruby Beach, que son los de los 12. And I'm also here supporting and standing by the Dairy Gold Dozen uh, that worked at Ruby Ridge Dairy. Ay, les pido de favor que, que si nos pueden ayudar porque ya es demasiado, no esperemos a que uh, otra cosa pase porque también estoy amenazada de muerte yo y mi familia. And I'm here asking for your help and to not wait until something else happens. I've been threatened uh, myself and my family um, to get, uh, of getting killed. Y es todo, muchas gracias. That's it, thank you. Gracias. Miguel will be Gilda. Soy Miguel Cuevas. 
My name is Miguel Cuevas. Yo soy de los 12 uh, compañeros que estamos en la Ruby Beach. And I am one of the 12 uh, workers from Ruby Ridge Dairy. Este, pues también vengo a, a pedir una ayuda. A veces nos pueden ayudar. Digo, ya que paren ese, ese yeah. robadero. Es un, es un robadero que están haciendo ahí. Bueno, ya ahorita ya no. Yeah. And, and I'm here to ask for help um, because they are just uh, stealing and uh, wages. It's just that's what they do in that industry. Yeah, porque nos hacía trabajar 12 horas. 11 horas y nomás nos pagaba por 8 horas. Because they will make us work 11, 12 hours and will only pay us 8. Este, y pues uh, hasta que nos enfadamos y le metimos su, le, digo, la, la demandamos. And until we got tired, then we sued her. Pero ahora lo están demandando usted. Ya. ¿Cómo? Ya es todo, ya, digo, ya no puedo... <laughs> that's, that's good. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you. Hi, everyone. Thank you so much, first of all, for being champion in this effort. I, I am Gilda Blanco. Um, member from Domestic Workers Alliance, We Dreaming Black here based in Seattle. I've been working as a domestic worker for 14 years. Most of my houses was in Bellevue. Working, um, isolating, um, facing um, a lot of verbal abuse. One day I got my work, like usually doing my work, And what one of my clients, he grabbed me, um, forcing me to, to use um, nursing custom to wear, you know, uh, as a black woman um, in the society, we, we are most of the community who suffering sexual abuse, sexual harassment, even in the street. Um, I'm here to um, share the story with you because I was um, uh, sexually abused in my workplace. And my petition to you is because we have a more than 33,000 women here in Seattle who work as a domestic workers in two million all over the country. And we need protection for farm workers and domestic workers because we deserve dignity and respect in our workplaces. Thank you. Thank you. We, uh, we have two more speakers sign up. I'm going to extend public comment unless there's objection. We've uh, already exceeded it, but we just have two more, and that would be Indira Trigo and Eric Nicholson. Are they here? Good afternoon. My name is Indira Trejo, and I'm the organizer for United Farm Workers. Um, and I'm here to support the resolution um, for the Dairy Gold Dozen. I've been working um, with United Farm Workers uh, and Dairy Workers for four years now. I have seen um, families really uh, struggle by this industry. Um, I will never forget the day that uh, Randy Vasquez drowned in a manure lagoon and every one of the Dairy Gold Dozen that couldn't find a job after they got fired, that their family struggled, that they continue to suffer every day thinking about this um, counter uh, claims that Ruby Rich has against them. And every one of the women that today um, spoke out here that are so courageous to speak up, I've met with them one-on-one. -on -one. Um, it is enough. It is enough for Dairy Gold. It is enough for every dairy, not just in Washington state, but in every state. 
that produce dairy. Um, we need to change what's happening. Um, dairy workers are dying in really ridiculous ways, like drowning in manure lagoons. Um, and I mean, the accidents that they suffer leaves them uh, paraplegic, right? We have the story of Juan in Vancouver, the story of Randy, the story of workers that every day get injured in this industry. Enough is enough. And I believe that um, we can change this in collaboration with Dairy Gold. And thank you so much for all of your support. Thank you. Good afternoon. My name is Eric Nicholson. I'm National Vice President of United Farm Workers. I've had the honor of working with farm workers for the last 30 years. Um, honestly, wish I wasn't here today. We have been working for years trying to collaborate with the dairy industry, and you're hearing the stories. We've lost Randy Vasquez, left his widow and two kids, and those fatalities continue. There are no laws to protect dairy workers from the unique hazards that they face in their daily employment. The laws and regulations exist for dairy workers the same for strawberry workers or hop pickers. That's inadequate, and we're seeing the carnage now in the faces of the workers that are here and those that are fearful. I think it's also an honor to stand with our sisters from the Domestic Workers Alliance and realize that the same exclusions that our community faces from the Fair Labor Standards Act, National Labor Relations Act, OSHA, are racist exclusions that were put on the books in the 1930s, and we're now living the legacy. So why are we here in the city of Seattle asking for your support? Several reasons. One, the milk that is largely served throughout the city comes from Derigold. We believe that as consumers, we ultimately have a responsibility to ensure the integrity of the products that we put into our bodies. We also believe that we have a moral responsibility to stand with our sisters and brothers that are doing be it domestic work or feeding our families every day. We have tried repeatedly to collaborate with Derigold, only to be sued, to be retaliated against, and to be mm -hmm. diminished. We have reached out to companies like Starbucks, who is, station, who is headquartered here in Seattle, and they would not even take our call. We have appealed to retailers like Costco, to Albertsons, to Kroger's, to Walmart, asking for their assistance to stop this carnage. But the money is there, and they're not stepping up to take the action needed to hold Derigold accountable and bring about the changes that these women and men need. So frankly, it's an act of desperation that we're here today, honored to be before you and share these stories, but ask for your support to send the moral message that things need to change. And we will be fasting starting on Thursday to make this call. Thank you. Thank you, Eric. <laughs> Thank you all for your testimony. We appreciate it. We'll move to the payment and bills section. Please read the title. Council Bill 119-358, appropriate amend to pay certain claims that order the payment thereof. I'll move to pass Council Bill 119-358. Second. It's been moved and seconded that the bill pass. Are any comments? Please call the roll on the passage, uh, passage of the bill. Begshaw? Aye. Gonzalez? Aye. Herbal? Aye. Johnson? Aye. Mosqueda? Aye. O'Brien? Aye. Sawant? Aye. President Harrell? Aye. Eight in favor, none opposed. Uh, the bill passes and the chair will sign it. Uh, before we get into our legislative matters, I'd like to move to excuse Council Member Juarez uh, from her attendance today, and we know she has, has a conflict and cannot make it as her second. second. All those in favor of excuse, excusing Council Member Juarez, please say aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it, and Council Member Juarez is excused. Uh, please read the report of the Finance and Neighborhoods Committee. The report of the Finance and Neighborhoods Committee, agenda item one, appointment 1076, appointment Calvin W. Goings as director of the Department of Finance and Administrative Services for a term to December 31st, 2021. The committee recommends the appointment be confirmed. Councilmember Beckshaw, Councilmember Beckshaw, I, I, this is where you were trying to amend. At some point, you may want to amend <laughs> it may to include right the now. letter of expectations. Thank you. I want to amend this appointment, 1076. No, we're not changing the director applicant, but we're going to add the city council's letter of expectations, which I believe he either has a copy or will soon have for director to be Calvin Goings. Second. Okay, it's been moved and seconded to uh, amend the appointment, which basically includes a letter of expectations. Any comments or questions? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it, and that legislation is amended. Councilmember Bagshaw, you have the floor. 
Thank you very much. Um, it is with great pleasure that I get to introduce what I hope will soon be our director of our finance and administrative services, Calvin Goings. I have known and worked with him for the better part of it a decade since he has been with uh, City Light for the last couple of years as chief of staff. Um, before that, I had the pleasure of working with him when he was um, then President Obama's appointment to head the Small Business Administration here. And he has done stellar work of, as chief of staff. I'm delighted to see that he has been uh, promoted to this new position of director of FAS, a critically important department for the city. And just, you know, also he knows so much, not just about the city of Seattle, but he also comes to us having had experience as an elected official from Pierce County, and he was a senator um, in our state legislature for a term. And in his um, volunteer life, he's also on the board of GSBA, and he's a neighbor in Belltown. So it is a delight to have him here. He is extremely well qualified, and his nomination received the endorsement um, unanimously out of my committee, and I would like to recommend his appointment. Very good. Any comments or questions? Very good. Oh, look at that. Hazing continues. Okay. Um, all those in favor of confirming the appointment, please vote aye. 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 Those opposed, vote no. The motion carries. The appointment is confirmed. Great. Congratulations. Okay. Do you want to give him a moment to speak? Or? Okay. At this point, uh, I'd like to invite Mr. Goins to come to the podium to share some brief remarks to the council and congratulations. Council Chair and members of the, the Council, thank you very much. Calvin Goings, for the record, thank you for your vote of my confirmation this, this afternoon. With your support, it will be an honor to lead the Department of Finance and Administrative Services. I also want to share my sincere appreciation to Mayor Durkin and her administration for this appointment to this key city post. I'm very excited to be working with a team of over 600 dedicated employees at FAS as we work together to ensure excellent customer service, a respectful and equitable workplace, continuous improvements in financial accountability, economic opportunity through expanded city contracting, and long-term stewardship of city assets. I am honored and humbled by this exciting opportunity, and thank you again for your vote to confirm me as the next FAS director. Thank you. Thank you, and congratulations again. Please read the next agenda item. Agenda item two, appointment 1078, appointment of Andres Mantilla as director of the Department of Neighborhoods for a term to December 31st, 2021. The committee recommends the appointment be confirmed. Councilmember Beckshaw. Thank you very much, Andres. Um, congratulations to you. Um, we are very much looking forward to your appointment as head of our Department of Neighborhoods. And I've had the pleasure of working with Andres actually just for the last couple of years before he came in as interim director in the Department of Neighborhoods, he worked at our Office of Economic Development, I believe, um, under our previous mayor. Um, took some time in the private sector where you were working with a public policy and consulting firm. But in my experience, and this is what I really want to say thank you, um, you are extremely responsive in your role. And you and your department working together with other, other departments uh, in our city, bringing Department of Neighborhoods back to where it ought to be, which is at the forefront of meeting with community and helping departments weave through whatever needles are necessary for the community. So I want to say thank you, urge my colleagues to support his nomination. His nomination likewise came out of Department of Neighborhoods and our Finance Committee last week unanimously. Um, I look forward to working with you and wish you all the best. And as I say, I hope this nomination is confirmed. Very good. And Councilman Bagshaw, would you like to amend this appointment as well, my notes say, to include that letter of expectation? Thank you very much. Um, I move to uh, amend this appointment to add our City Council letter of expectations for Director Andres Monti as well. Second. It's a move and second to amend the legislation by, by adding the letter of expectation. Any questions or comments? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it. Thank you, Councilmember Bagshaw, for presenting this matter. Any further comments on the package before we vote? Councilmember Mosqueda. 
Thank you very much, Mr. President. I just want to say we all know that there were some big shoes to fill, and I think that Andres definitely has demonstrated his ability to do so. I, ex I especially appreciate his commitment to reaching out proactively and firmly working with community groups that may not have been at the table before and doing so in a way that really emulates our commitment to bicultural and bilingual outreach and inclusion. Um, I'm really excited to work with you, especially as we think about creating a Seattle that works for everyone, a Seattle where those who work here can afford to live here and making sure that our community is at the table when we talk about community driven development so i'm looking forward to working with you and congratulations congratulations to you thanks for those comments councilmember mosqueda any other comments from any of my colleagues okay here's the moment of truth <laughs> all those in favor of confirming the appointment please vote aye. aye aye opposed vote no the motion carries the appointment is confirmed <clears throat> and this time Mr. Mantella to come to the podium to share some brief remarks to the council. Good leadership too, Mr. Goins, on those brief remarks. <laughs> it's, always, uh, it's always a pleasure to go after Mr. Goings. Um, thank you, uh, council, for uh, your, uh, your vote. And uh, I just want to say a few words. I take this responsibility very seriously. I think, I think uh, uh, DON is uniquely suited as uh, a department in the city of Seattle to elevate community voices. I'm very honored uh, that Mayor Durkin has put her faith in me as well. Um, I'm very excited to join a fantastic team and to lead a fantastic team working with community groups, working with community organizations. Uh, this work is challenging, but it's the most fulfilling work to see uh, community come to the table to elevate their voice and to change policy. So thank you very much uh, for your vote, and uh, we look forward to working with you all. Congratulations. Thank you, and congratulations. Look forward to working with both of you. Okay, let's go to agenda item number three, and please read the short title. Agenda item three, Council Bill 119-357, relating to the sale of lots one, two, three, and four of Block 7 and the Latona addition to the City of Seattle. Committee recommends the bill pass. Councilman Beckshaw. Thank you. This is a sale of property over on Burke Gilman next to Dun Dunlumber. Um, it is a 15,000 square foot property that is known as the Brickyard. And it has a sales price of not less than $2.575 million. It is in an area that is zoned industrial. I see 45. The possibility of residential uses there um, have been eliminated simply because of the zoning. And I just want to say, Council Member Swant, um, your legislative aide came to my office uh, this afternoon and asked if there was a reason why the money could not go back into the housing fund. And the answer is, is that when the property was purchased, it was pur purchased with gas tax fund monies that um, must go back into the transportation department. So I just want you to know that we did look into it. We did ask that question. And uh, if this is approved and the transfer um, is completed today, the receipts that the City Department of Transportation receives will go back into uh, SDOT money and into their funds. So um, there's been great community support for this. I just want to acknowledge that at my meeting last week, we had members of the neighborhood, Cascade Bicycle Club, the pedestrian organization, Feet First were there just to <coughs> say they support this. And we really appreciate the visuals that we saw from Dunlumber with the idea that it will be part of the neighborhood. It will tie itself into Burke Gilman, that people will be um, invited to come in, use the facilities, and, and just it'll be a real neighborhood asset. At the same time, it expands some space for that company that is very important to the Wallingford neighborhood. So uh, we recommend that this purchase and sale proceed. Very good. Any questions or comments? Customer Mosqueda. Thank you, Mr. President. I just want to say thank you to Chair Bagshaw for her work on this and for her staff and central staff's um, willingness to answer the various questions that I had. One of the issues that you've heard us continually talk about this year is the ability to keep public land in public hands and build housing on it. This is the question that we look forward to asking for every parcel of land as soon as we're able to hopefully pass the disposition policy here soon. Here's a great example where our city departments did ask that question. And the answer was we cannot build housing on this relatively small 
small plot of land. It is not zoned for housing. It is not zoned for mixed use, um, and thus we cannot put housing above it. And given the size of this lot, it makes sense to uh, continue to allow Dunlumber to uh, expand their production there in this industrial area uh, to promote good living wage jobs in this area and make sure that we're connecting the community. Uh, I really appreciated that even though we don't have the ability to build housing here, the vision, the model that has been outlined for us includes, as Council Member Bagshaw just mentioned, the use of um, a public space on the, the ground floor so that we're connecting the trail uh, to community space there. And so I'm really looking forward to how we partner more with organizations that are interested in this trail-oriented development, as they called it, so that we can get more individuals of all ages, ethnicities, languages, races, genders, um, abilities, using the Burt Gilman, connecting our community to public assets like the ones that we already have down there on the north end of Lake Union and the ones that are soon coming. So I will be a yes in support of this legislation. Thank you. Thank you. Councilmember Johnson. Well, I won't repeat the excellent points made by both of my previous colleagues, um, but just want to say thank you to the folks from the uh, Department of Transportation, FAS, and in particular, the folks representing the Dunn family and the Dunn family themselves. I first learned about this project about four years ago, and um, it's taken us a little while to get to this point, but we're glad to be here and excited to see a project that has such um, strong commitment from so many different diverse stakeholders move forward. Excellent. Councilmember Gonzalez. Thank you. Just to uh, join the chorus here, um, also wanted to uh, take a moment to recognize the good work done on the efforts here. I think this is a good example of what happens when we do have surplus land and we have a property um, owner and, uh, excuse me, a, a purchaser of the property who has really gone, gone above and beyond to do the necessary community outreach to make sure that folks in the neighborhood understand um, why it's going to be repurposed for XYZ purpose. And so I want to commend the folks over at Dunlumber for the good work you all did to, in, to do some of the hard work and lifting around making sure that uh, the Wallingford community really understood what the project meant and what the scope would be. And so I just want to thank you all for, for that and also for briefing me personally about, I think, a year ago already at this point to uh, make sure that we understood in our office exactly what was going to be done um, on this uh, parcel of land and also all the work that had already been done in terms of community outreach. So kudos to you all for having a uh, very smooth process and uh, really look forward to seeing uh, the end result. I think it's going to be a huge contribution to this part of, um, part of the city. So thank you. Thank you for those words. Okay. Would anyone else like to comment or ready to vote? Please call the roll on the passage of the bill. Begshaw? Aye. Gonzalez? Aye. Herbold? Aye. Johnson? Aye. Mosqueda? Aye. O'Brien? Aye. Sawat? Aye. President Harrell? Aye. Eight in favor, none opposed. The bill passes and the chair was silent. Please read items four and five. Agenda items four and five, appointments 1072 and 1073, appointments of Leanne Kim Du and Karen Kubu Fleming as members Community Involvement Commission for term to May 31st, 2020. Oh, excuse me. Um, Leanne Kim Du is a member for May 31st, 2019, and Karen Kubo Fleming is for term to May 31st, 2020. The committee recommends these appointments be confirmed. Great. That's Mayor Beckshaw. Thank you. I will move through these quickly since we had length lengthy discussions at the last committee. This is for the Community Involvement Commission. Uh, Leanne Doe has been teaching at the University of Washington School of Social Work since 2008. Uh, she and her family are among the founders of Seattle's first Vietnamese Buddhist temple. And she opens her home as a sanctuary and a center and a boarding home for multiracial, multigenerational, and multi-class community members. We're very pleased that she is willing to spend her time with us and working with the CIC. May I just proceed with the next and Please we can vote them, yes. both them both? So Karen Kubo Fleming is also to be a member of the Community Involvement Commission. And I just want to say to the Department of Neighborhoods and the people that are involved in this, it's making a big difference to have this focus uh, and having this particular commission being able to help us reach out into the community. Um, Karen is a third generation Japanese American uh, member of our community. She's lived in Seattle for over 30 years. And she helped found something called the Gucci Project. Um, it provides short term care for pets of people who are homeless. 
uh, people who are very low income and face situations that prevent them from caring for their animals. Uh, she also is a foster parent for um, dogs that need that kind of help. And she's been working as a journalist for CBC TV in Toronto, Cairo Radio, the International Examiner. And we're very pleased that she too will be part of this commission and we recommend the, uh, their appointments. Thank you. Any comments? C Councilmember Johnson. Just briefly, I want to speak to Leando, who's um, representing District 4 as part of the um, CIC. I've had the great fortune of knowing Leanne since um, she was a Wales fellow several years ago, maybe a decade ago, um, of course, named after the legendary Tom C. Wales. And um, her, she and her husband um, have a really incredible impact on our neighborhood. Um, they're the kind of neighbors who um, start intentional conversations with their uh, friends and neighbors about really hard topics around homelessness, around racial inequality, around economic inequality, and do so in a way that are not confrontational, but just um, coming from a place of understanding and of support. Um, you know, next door is not necessarily a place where a lot of uh, great conversations tend to happen in our city. But next door is a place where they've uh, uh, had conversations with colleagues and friends and neighbors about uh, people who are living or staying with them or who they're giving support to. And it's really opened up, I think, a very deep and um, a meaningful conversation in our neighborhood about the ways we can all be supportive of those um, who are less fortunate amongst us. So as Councilmember Bagshaw said so well, I'm very grateful to Leanne for the time that she's going to be putting into the CIC and uh, for her work in community. Great. Very good. Thanks Thank for those words, Councilman Johnson. Are there any other hands up? Are we ready to vote? Okay. All those in favor of confirming the appointments, please vote aye. 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 Those opposed, vote no. The motion carries and appointments are confirmed. Please read the next agenda item. The report of the Civil Rights, Utilities, Economic Development, and Arts Committee, Agenda Item 6, Council Bill 119351, related to the Human Rights Code, broadening coverage of unfair practices to include domestic workers and hiring entities, extending protections to domestic workers and extending obligations to hiring entities, amending sections 14.04.020 and 0 .030 of the San Francisco Code, and adding a new section 14.04.230 of the SMC. The committee recommends the bill pass as amended. Thank Council you. Member Herbold. Appreciate it. Um, so I want to thank everybody who's joined us here again today uh, to talk about the need for this bill. I was first approached um, about this legislation by Councilmember Mosqueda during the Domestic Workers Bill of Rights deliberations. You've all shared um, with us um, your heartbreaking stories of um, sexual harassment and discrimination in the workplace. And I'm honored to play, play this small part in um, addressing this horrible problem in your workplaces and in the workplaces of your co-workers. This legislation is designed to help protect domestic workers from the forms of abuse that we've heard about today and to ensure um, that when it does happen that you're able to bring these claims to the Office of Civil Rights. The, um, in, in particular, the legislation extends the recourse available through the Office of Civil Rights to include domestic workers who are identified as independent contractors. Um, domestic workers who are considered employees already have um, the protection. The legislation amends the Fair Employment Practices Section 14.04 of the Municipal Code to add a section reflecting that the chapter covers domestic services and amends the de Declaration of Policy and the Definition Sections. Um, the amendment to the Declaration of Policy section states that the chapter applies to hiring entities, domestic workers, and employees. The definition section adds in the definition of hiring entity and domestic worker and adds in those terms and domestic service to the de existing definitions as applicable. Lastly, the Municipal Code also adds that if an individual or household contracts with a separate hiring entity, that hiring entity is solely liable for any violations of the chapter unless the individual or household interferes with any rights established. This provision ensures that the correct entity will be held liable if the chapter is violated. I have um, one amendment to the bill um, that I would like to, to move forward. Um, I move to amend Council Bill 119351 by adding a new section five entitled sections one, two, three, and four of the ordinance six shall take effect on July 1st, 2019. Second. Thank you. Um, the, um, 
the amendment to the bill um, accomplishes a couple different things. The uh, legislation that I referred to earlier um, to Council, uh, Council Member Mosqueda's Domestic Workers Bill of Rights legislation goes into effect um, on July 1st, 2019. This allows for um, a uh, uh, implementation um, that will be led by uh, members of the workers board. Um, it's gonna be important to also include discussion around this element. In addition, um, the, um, there's, some, there's some funding issues associated uh, with this legislation. There's a fiscal note um, that the implementation of this legislation, the education and outreach is um, uh, about $75,000, and that's something that I'm hoping that we'll take up in the budget. So there's both um, sort of a bureaucratic and technical reason for um, aligning the implementation date, um, but there's also an important uh, fiscal reason. Very good. So we have first an amendment before we speak to the base legislation, and Councilmember Herbold amended to Section 5, uh, which is basically Sections 1, 2, 3, and 4 of the ordinance, the, the effective date, and I assume implicit in that is the renumbering of the remaining sections accordingly. Is Correct. That uh, amendment. So just on the amendment, any questions on the amendment? On, just on the amendment. All those in favor of the amendment, please vote aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it. So we have now base legislation that's been amended. Councilmember Escada, would you like to speak to it? Um, thank you, Mr. President. I do want to start with a huge appreciation, a note of appreciation for Councilmember Herbal. She's taken this incredible component of the policy and made sure that it was expedited, that we had the full stakeholders at the table for conversations, that we work with the domestic workers and the hiring entities to make sure that this critical component was part of the Domestic Workers' Bill of Rights. Uh, you called it a small part of the solution, but in essence, this is the backbone of the domestic worker protections that I think many domestic workers want wanted to see every single story. Yes, included stories about wage theft, included stories about the need for rest breaks and meal breaks, protection from having documents withheld, the desire to have a table so there could be ongoing negotiation. But every single story included an element of harassment, intimidation, and retaliation. And what you've been able to pass today really completes this puzzle. Um, I just want to say thank you for your steadfast leadership, also for taking a critical look at what legislation or what words we needed to have in this component of the legislation so that we could align the implementation of mid-year next year so that uh, the Domestic Workers Board can think through the outreach plan, which is going to be critical with Office of Labor Standards and the Office of civil rights to work directly with our community partners, many of whom are here today, so we can do the outreach needed, so that we can avoid confusion and not knowing which policies apply at which time, and also making sure that the department um, really thinks through rulemaking with the stakeholders at the table. Uh, as you heard, and the National Vice President for the United Farm Workers, Eric Nicholson, say, these policies, the reason that we need these policies today is because domestic workers and farm workers were intentionally left out of national, state, and local labor protections left out for racist and sexist reasons. I wish we could implement these yesterday. I wish we could implement them tomorrow. But I think through the uh, legislation that you've created, the ability for us to make sure that stakeholders at, are at the table, we will implement these in 2019 um, with the thoughtful, proactive approach that the stakeholders have been able to bring to the table. So for me, this is um, a huge component that would not have been possible without your leadership, Council Member Herbold. Thank you. And without the leadership of the direct uh, lives, uh, experience from the lives that you've heard have been impacted without this legislation. So, mil gracias de nuevo por estar aquí con nosotros. Gracias de nuevo por sus uh, historias y gracias por su um, courage. ¿Cómo se dice courage? Valor. Valor um, que, que, que um, tienen en este, um, en este momento y en su, um, en su vida. Gracias por todo. Thank you so much for all of your courage that you show today and every day of your life. This is possible because of your work and your words. Thank you, Councilman Mosqueda. <laughs> would, would anyone like to say some closing words? And then if not, Councilmember Herbal, would you like to close the... Discussion. Sure, I just want to give some additional thanks. <laughs> um, 
just echoing Councilman Mosqueda's uh, words about your lived experiences, um, you are truly um, the best advocates for your cause, and thank you so much again for the courage in humbling us all um, with sharing your stories. Um, in addition uh, to thanking Councilman Mosqueda for her for her leadership and her giving me this opportunity to take to play a role in in this policy, I also want to um, thank a couple other folks. I want to thank Lauren Othon from the Office of Civil Rights. Um, I want to thank Asha Venka Taraman, I'm going to get that one of these days, from Council Central Staff. I want to thank uh, Shannon Perez Darby from my office and uh, Sajal Perrick from Councilmember Muscada's office and the many, many advocates that have been working on this legislation. Very good. Thank you very much. Okay. Please call the roll on the passage of the amended bill. Begshaw? Aye. Gonzalez? B. Herbold? <laughs> Aye. Johnson? Aye. Mosqueda? Aye. O'Brien? Aye. Sawant? Aye. President Harrell? Aye. Eight in favor, none opposed. Bill passed and Cheryl sign it. <laughs> item 7 through 11. Agenda item 7 through 11, appointments 1110 through 1114, appointments of Brian Egger, Elizabeth W. Puchal, Jack, Jackie Turner, Adrian Glover, and Valentina Montesino as member Seattle Human Rights Commission for term to January 22nd, 2020. The committee recommends these appointments be confirmed. That's member Herbold. Thank you. Uh, appointment of Brian Egger. Bri Mr. Egger is a commission appointment to the Human Rights Commission and is a civil servant responsible for performing oversight of federal programs. Mr. Egger is interested in offering his time talents, knowledge, and expertise working with the city to help advance its agenda and offering feedback on proposals related to education, human rights, and community involvement. Elizabeth uh, Pashod is a council appointment to the Human Rights Commission. Liz has a lifelong relationship with public service, including membership on previous boards and commissions, which are integral to, integral to the health of local governments. Jackie Turner. Uh, is a council appointment to the Human Rights Commission. Jackie cares deeply about the people she has met in Seattle and wants to ensure the city maintains its empathy and commitment to do good for everyone as we go grow. Through her work on the commission, she would like to guarantee that people remain the heart of decision making. Adrian Glover is a council appointment to the Human Rights Commission. Adrian is a human rights advocate with a heightened focus on race relations and social justice for all. Adrian has been a champion for equal treatment and accountability, showing support for joining social activist groups, political campaign fundraising, faith-based initiatives, and fraternal national programs. And Valentina Montesinos is a council appointment to the Human Rights Commission. Valentina holds an MBA in sustainable business, as well as a bachelor's in anthropology and women's studies. She has over 15 years of experience managing projects, people, and programs in nonprofit philanthropy and business environments. Very good. Any comments on these appointments? If not, those in favor of confirming the appointments, please vote aye. 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 Opposed? Vote no. The motion carries and appointments are confirmed. Let's read agenda item number 12. Agenda item 12, appointment 1121, appointment of Anquita L. Adams as member of Seattle Commission for People with Disabilities for term to April 30, 2020. The committee recommends the appointment be confirmed. Council Member Herbold. Thank you. Anquita Adams is a mayoral appointment to the Commission of People with Disabilities. Anquita is the founder of ALA Consulting with years of education and experience. Anquita is an empathetic and intuitive expert in her field. Anquita has a Bachelor of Arts in Sociology with a minor in gender studies and leadership skills from Mississippi State University. Very good. Any comments on this appointment? Those in favor of confirming the appointment, please vote aye. 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 Those opposed, vote no. The motion carries the appointment is confirmed. Please read agenda item number 13. Agenda item 13, appointment 1122, appointment of Nate Omdal as member, Seattle Music Commission for a term to August 31st, 2021. The committee recommends the appointment be confirmed. Council Member Herbold. Thank you. Nate Omdal is a council appointment to the Seattle Music Commission. Nate earned a Bachelor's of Music from Cornish College of the Arts. Nate currently serves on the Director's Board of the American Federation of Musicians, Local 76493, and works as a contractor for Sky Muse Studios. Very good. Any questions? All those in favor of confirming the appointment, please vote aye. 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 Opposed, vote no. The motion carries. The appointment is confirmed. Pre please read items 14 through 16. 
Agenda items 14 through 16, appointment 1104, 1117, and 1118, appointment and reappointment of Esther Lucero and Jesse Murray as members of the Seattle LGBTQ Commission, return to April 30th, 2020, and appointment of Michael B. Garrett as member of the Seattle LGBTQ Commission, for term to October 31st, 2020. The committee recommends these appointments be confirmed. Mr. Member Herbold. Thank you. Esther Lucero is a mayoral appointment to the LGBTQ Commission. Esther is a DNA. Navajo and Latino. She is a queer identified woman who currently serves as the chief executive officer of the Seattle Indian Health Board. Michael is a council appointment to the LGBTQ Commission. Michael is a lifelong Washingtonian who has lived in the East Lake District of Seattle since 1980. Michael has expertise in health care, quality, care management, health and disability benefits, and care delivery models. As a parent, Michael hopes to provide insights and representation of LGBTQ parents and elders through his work with the Seattle LGBTQ Commission. Jesse is a reappointment. Uh, Jesse is a commission reappointment to the Seattle LGBTQ Commission. Jesse started her work on the commission as a Get Engaged member and has been a community activist, leader, and volunteer for more than half of her life, particularly in the realms of reproductive justice, healthcare access, and LGBTQ advocacy. Thank you very much. Any questions on these appointments? <coughs> Those in favor of confirming the appointments, please vote aye. 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 Those opposed vote no. The motion carries and the appointments are confirmed. Please read items 17 and 18. Agenda item 17 and 18 appointments, 1119, 1120 appointment and reappointment of Chieko Takai Phillips and Stephen M. Galatro as members of the Seattle Arts Commission for term to December 31st, 2019. The committee recommends these appointments be confirmed. Council Member Herbold. Thank you. Chieko Takai is a council appointment to this Seattle Arts Commission. Chieko currently works with the Heritage Fund Funding Program for Four Culture, the Cultural Services Agency for King County, Washington. She completed her BA in History from Davidson College and her MA in Museology from the University of Washington and has con demonstrated leadership for racial equity analysis and change within Four Culture and is an active member of the Arts Commission Facilities and Equitable Development Committee. Uh, Stephen Galatro is a commission reappointment. Steve has been the executive director for Pratt Fine Arts Center in Seattle since 2012. He was honored in 2014 for his rejuvenation of Pratt as one of the top 40 under 40 business leaders in the region by the Puget Sound Business Journal. Steve holds a BA in theater arts from Arizona State University and an MFA in arts leadership from Seattle University where he continues to serve as adjunct faculty. Very good, any comments? Those in favor of confirming the appointments, please vote aye. Aye. Those opposed vote no. The motion carries and appointments are confirmed. Please read the report of the Human Services Equitable Development and Renter Rights Committee. The report of the Human Services Equitable Development and Renters Rights Committee, agenda item, 19, 11, excuse me, 11, 19, 20, 21. Yes, correct. Yes. <laughs> um, uh, appointments 1126 through 1120, appointments of Lori Goff and, so, and Devin Sabrinell as members of Seattle Renters Commission for term to February 20, 2019, and appointment of Mercedes T. Tate Lamar as members of Seattle Renters Commission for term to February 28, 2020. The committee recommends these appointments be confirmed. House Member Sawant. Thank you, President Harrell. Lori Goff is a mayoral appointee. She's a preschool teacher and renter on Capitol Hill and has experience working with families experiencing homelessness due to rising rents. Devin Silvernail has been appointed by the renters commissioners. He is the founder and executive director of B Seattle, a nonprofit that believes uh, that, that provides uh, know your rights trainings for renters around the city and has been an activist advocating for renters rights in Seattle. He's also a tenant education counselor at the tenants union and a volunteer with the housing justice project. Marcy Tate Lamar is also an appointee of the renters commissioner. She is born and raised in Seattle and rents in the central district. She does anti-violence police work in LGBTQ communities. And she spoke to our committee about her hope to bring the housing crisis faced by the LGBTQ community into her work on the renters commission. The Human Services, Equitable Development and Renters Rights Committee unanimously recommends that the council confirm all three appointments. Very good, any questions or comments? Those in favor of confirming the appointments, please vote aye. 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 Those opposed vote no. The motion carries and the appointments are confirmed. Please read the report of the Sustainability and Transportation Committee. Sustainability and Transportation Committee, agenda item 22, resolution 31835, granting conceptual approval to construct, maintain, and operate below grade private utility lines under and across South Holgate Street, 
east of Occidental Avenue South and west of Third Avenue South, as proposed by the National National Railroad Passenger Corporation, the committee recommends that the resolution be adopted. Council Member O'Brien. Thank you. So uh, Amtrak is working on a project that will um, help make the uh, passenger rail system function better and better for our environment. Um, they're updating the facilities to have electrical capacity for uh, the uh, diesel engines to turn off when they're parked there and be plugged into essentially a version of shore power like we do with the ships. Also updates the systems for um, uh, treating stormwater and um, emptying the bathrooms on the trains too. This is in part to uh, accommodate the expansion of passenger rail, including the expansion of sounder rail, um, which is operated by Amtrak. So um, this is something that I think is a good thing to move forward. Excellent, very good. Any questions or comments on this resolution? Okay, those in favor of adopting the resolution, please vote aye. 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 Those opposed, vote no. The motion carries, the resolution is adopted and the chair will sign it. Please read items 23 through 25. Agenda items 23 through 25, appointments 1080, 1081, 1106, appointments of Lisa Bagarda as member levy to move C uh, Seattle Oversight Committee for term to December 31st, 2019, appointment Hester Sarah Buren as member levy to move Seattle Le Oversight Committee for term to December 31st, 2018, reappointment Betty Spythe Carroll as member Levy to move Seattle Oversight Committee for term to December 31st, 2021. The committee recommends these appointments be confirmed. Councilmember Bryan. Thank you. Uh, so Lisa is the Executive Secretary of the Seattle Building Trades. Um, Hester is the Policy Director at Transportation Choices Coalition. And Betty's currently the co-chair of the Levy to Move Oversight Committee and has served on it since its inception and was also on the Bridging the Gap Committee. Um, runs their own consulting business. All would be great appointments to this committee. Very good. Any questions on these appointments? Okay. Those in favor of confirming the appointments, please vote aye. 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 Those opposed, vote no. The motion carries and appointments are confirmed. Please read items 26 and 27. Agenda items 26 and 27. Appointment 1082 and 1083. Appointment of Leland Brunch as member of Seattle School Traffic Safety Committee for term to March 31st, 2020. Appointment Marilyn K. Furman as member of Seattle School Traffic Safety Committee for term to March 31st, 2021. The committee recommends these appointments be confirmed. Very good. Councilmember Bryan. Uh, thank you. Uh, Lee Brutch is a retired architect who's been active in pedestrian safety issues um, up around Aurora. And Maryland's a retired elementary school counselor. Both bring some expertise to the school traffic uh, safety committee. Very good. Any questions or comments on these appointments? Those in favor of confirming the appointments, please vote aye. 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 Those opposed, vote no. The motion carries. The appointments are confirmed. Please read the report of the Gender Equity Safe Communities New Americans and Education Committee. The report of the Gender Equity Safe Communities New Americans and Education Committee, Agenda 28, Resolution 31816, related to the City of Seattle's Comprehensive Emergency Management Plan, adopting the CEMP Introduction Emergency Operations Plan, Continuity of Government Plan, and Emergency Support Function Number 14, Transition to Recovery, including 2017 Revisions. Committee recommends the resolution be adopted. Very good. Councilmember Gonzalez. Thank you, Council President. Approval of Resolution 31816 would update four elements of the City of Seattle's Comprehensive Emergency Management Plan. Uh, it includes an introduction to the Comprehensive Emergency Management Plan, the Emergency Operations Plan, the Continuity of Government Plan, and Emergency Support Function Number 14, covering transition to recovery. The Comprehensive Emergency Management Plan defines how the city will prevent, prepare for, respond to, and recover from disasters. Barb Graff, Director of Seattle's Office of Emergency Management, reviewed the updates with the Gender Equity Safe Communities New Americans and Education Committee on September 12th. The updates reorganize the existing comprehensive plan to support more effective training but retain existing core information. Both the mayor's emergency executive executive board and the city's disaster management committee have reviewed and approved the updated documents. The gender equity, safe communities, new Americans and education committee unanimously recommends approval of resolution 31816. Very good. Thank you. Councilman Gonzalez. Any questions or comments on this resolution? Nope. So those in favor of adopting the resolution, please vote. Aye. 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 Those opposed vote. No. The motion carries, the resolution is adopted, and the chair will sign it. Adoption of other resolutions, please read it into the record. 
Agenda item 29, resolution 31838, reaffirming city council's commitment to workers and supporting dairy workers and their fast for reconciliation. Council member Mosqueda. Thank you, Mr. President. As you heard from the testimony that was presented today from the United Farm Workers, folks wish that they weren't coming here. After years of having conversations both at the state level and throughout Washington State, um, these workers are coming to us with a request for assistance and solidarity. I've been working with the United Farm Workers and dairy workers uh, for the last few years. And as you've heard from their personal stories, they've seen repeatedly situations where safety concerns have not been corrected. Unfair working conditions continue you. Harassment and intimidation occur on a daily basis, and issues of sexual harassment occur from many of the women who work in the dairy industry. United Farm Workers has come to us in a call for solidarity. The City of Seattle stands in solidarity with United Farm Workers today. We stand in solidarity with unions from across Washington State, with faith groups, with businesses, with community organizations who've called for there to be reconciliation of the issues that they face on a daily basis and the call for a fast. Dairy workers around Washington State provide the milk that is drank right here in Seattle. They provide the milk that is supplied to many of our businesses and the milk that many families rely on on a daily basis. But these dairy workers struggle to provide for their own families. While these dairy workers provide the food and the milk for families across Washington State, they struggle to put food and milk on their own tables. Today, we're standing up in solidarity with United Farm Workers, with the dairy workers, with the individuals who've called for action. Mr. President, if I may read from the resolution that's in front of us today for consideration for the public's knowledge of what is included, that would be appreciated. Uh, please do, Councilmember Mosqueda. Just a few of the recitals and a summary of what we are calling for. Whereas numerous dairy workers across Washington State have voiced concerns alleging hostile work environments, unsafe working conditions, wage and hour theft, sexual harassment, lack of clean drinking water, physical abuse, and verbal abuse. And whereas dairy workers plan to engage in a five-day fast, a fast for reconciliation, supported by members of the faith, business, and labor community. And whereas Dairy Gold is headquartered in Seattle and holds its corporate offices in Seattle, the city of Seattle therefore resolves to stand in solidarity with dairy workers, fighting for the right to work without fear of a, uh, or intimidation, and calls on Dairy Gold and other companies who purchase this product to work with dairy workers and their representatives at the United Farm Workers to ensure these pr protections are accomplished. Where the City of Seattle stands with dairy farm workers and dairy gold workers to provide Seattle residents with dairy products, the City of Seattle extends its full support for the upcoming fast and reconciliation to bring much needed attention to the issues impacting daily, uh, impacting Washington State dairy workers on a daily basis. Mr. President, these individuals have taken the courageous step to come forward and express um, the concerns that they see on a daily basis. And we know that here in the city of Seattle, we don't have many dairy farms, but we do have an obligation to continue to extend our commitment to the hardworking individuals who provide the milk and food for the families in Seattle. We here in Seattle have stood up courageously and asked for a higher minimum wage, protections from wage theft, the ability to have a sick and safe day, the ability to be free from intimidation and harassment. These are the same protections that we expect from individuals, whether they're companies, whether they're subcontractors, or whether their organizations are headquartered here in Seattle, because our commitment to workers extends beyond our borders. And when we consume products within our city, we expect the full supply chain to be honored, for the supply chain to have good labor protections at every single point along the way. I'm really honored to be able to bring this resolution forward. I was humbled by the amount of individuals who came forward and stood with us. Councilmember Sawant, Councilmember Gonzalez, and I think every member of this um, body has shown support for workers in the past who have been in vulnerable situations. And today we stood with the farm workers, with unions, with faith leaders, with individuals who've been calling for action over many years, and this last effort to, to try to elevate the issue to make sure that farm workers, dairy workers explicitly, have the protections that we would expect for every worker here in Seattle. Mil gracias por su trabajo, gracias por sus cuentos, por su historia, gracias por estar aquí con nosotros, estamos aquí con ustedes, gracias. Thank you, Casper Mosqueda. Okay, we have a resolution, very well described by Councilmember Mosqueda. Would any of my comments, colleagues like to make any comments? Councilmember 
Bagshaw. Thank you. Um, Council Member Mosqueda, I want to say thank you and a big thank you for bringing this forward. Um, and I have been really honored working with you in the last year where your heart is to care for employees and families. Um, and also today as we're hearing from people in the audience about the fact that they haven't been paid um, the fact that they have been harassed, that their working conditions are um, less than meritorious and in many cases just despicable and that you brought it to the attention of the public and I appreciate what you are calling for. Um, and I just want to uh, tell my colleagues as we have just started this meeting today, I received um, an email from uh, the legal counsel of Derry Gold. And I'm wondering, do you, would you like to hear what they have to say or do you just want me to summarize that they're saying they're not part of this lawsuit? What would be useful? Uh, Councilmember Mosqueda, this is really your resolution. I want to be helpful because I'm going to support your resolution. Well, thank you so much. Thank you for your support. Um, you can feel free to summarize. I think in the conversations that we've had over the years, we know that when it comes to contracting and subcontracting, many individuals will say this is, was not me as an employer directly responsible, and I can understand where their legal argument is probably coming from. Again, this is a resolution in support of the workers at every single level. So while there may not be, may be a lawsuit or may not be a lawsuit that they are engaged in, what's important to know is that this issue has over many years been try tried to be elevated and I think this is a wonderful opportunity for us in Seattle to say that our same labor protections should apply throughout the supply chain and especially when we uh, know that there's so many individuals who do consume this product we want those workers to be safe uh, so I've heard it but um, I appreciate the, the the way that they've reached out and again I think that this resolution is not actually uh, commenting on that it's commenting on the desire to make sure that every um, level along the supply chain, we expect accountability and protection from wage theft, harassment, and intimidation, and therefore to, for there to be good faith negotiations so that workers' voices can be elevated. What I heard her say is she could just summarize, well, like maybe she doesn't need, she, I also heard is, or say she's heard it before. So. Right. Well, just, uh, just, I will just summarize this briefly, and it's only because it came to us today, and it's not that I have um, any knowledge, uh, particularly of, of Dairy Gold itself, but there is a lawsuit that is uh, ongoing in eastern Washington that goes to trial soon. Dairy Gold says it attempts to pull Dairy Gold into it. They're simply not a party to the litigation involving the farm workers and that the farm workers were not employees of Dairy Gold. So I'm not in a position where I can support this. I just wanted to acknowledge that it came in and I thought in fairness that I should at least um, mention that. That said, okay. the employees need to be cared for. Okay, I think we're prepared to vote. Uh, Councilman Gonzalez. Uh, not quite yet. <laughs> um, I just I just really um, want to thank Councilmember Mosqueda for bringing this up. She's been working with uh, farm workers for quite some time in her prior life before she got um, elected to the Seattle City Council in a lot of different areas, housing, health care, healthcare, labor rights, et cetera. And so I just really want to appreciate the work that you have uh, done and carried into these chambers um, as a result of that prior advocacy work that you have um, done on behalf of uh, farm workers. Uh, a lot of folks up here know that I grew up as a migrant farm worker myself and um, today at three o'clock my mom started her shift at a processing plant in Sunnyside uh, Washington at the age of um, I won't tell you because she'll kill me but um, you know she's she's older and uh, she still continues to work in these processing plants uh, the one she works at is in Sunnyside not that far away from Dairy Gold um, in uh, Sunnyside as well and uh, I just I just really think that regardless of whether or not this corporation is part of this particular lawsuit or a particular lawsuit, the principle of taking a position on the dignity of work that is being done by the, the dairy workers is a really important position for the city of Seattle to take as one of the primary um, uh, consumer markets of this product. And it really does remind me of the inception of the United Farm Workers uh, to begin with. Um, you know, many, some people up here are old enough to have been around when, they're, when the great boycott 
um, was in place and there was a, a massive amount of protesting and boycotting right here in our city as it should have occurred and across uh, the country. And I just see this as the next movement and the next phase for our farm workers. Um, you know, we've heard atrocious stories of these farm workers, um, dairy workers being uh, sexually assaulted and sexually abused and harassed. Um, for no other reason than showing up to work, and that is wrong. And um, earlier today, I shared with the workers um, in Spanish, uh, that I'll say it in English now, is that is that really, you know, a, a man doesn't sexually harass women, a man doesn't disrespect women, a man does not disrespect the uh, a woman's effort to provide for herself and her family, um, and um, the behavior that is occurring at uh, the dairies is absolutely dishonorable and disrespectful and disgusting. And I believe we have an obligation to continue to stand in solidarity with workers across the state as consumers of this product. Um, it just really reminds me of all of the work uh, I used to do in the fields as a young child to buy, uh, to pick fruit that my own family couldn't afford to buy um, and eat. And so uh, I think I think for me this is very personal and um, and I really do, again, appreciate bringing this to light and I hope that some of our homegrown companies uh, like Starbucks and others will stand up and will do the right thing and, and be on the right side of history, just like all those grocers who refuse to carry grapes during the boycott. I hope that they choose to also um, uh, not carry this, these products if uh, workers aren't being treated well. And of course, in the fight for um, workers in the great boycott, uh, we know that grocers didn't choose to not carry the products. We demanded it and we forced them to, and it was through the building the movement of farm workers. And so I want to appreciate UFW for the work they did then, because I know that we know how to do it again, and we stand here with you at the ready to continue to fight for you and for workers. Um, thank you so much for being with us. Gracias. Good. I think that'd be a good note to close on. Thank you, Councilman Gonzalez. Okay. Those in favor of adopting the resolution, I'm sorry, I will move to adopt the res resolution 31838. Second. It's been moved and seconded that the resolution be adopted. The reason I have to do that is because it was introduced today as well on the same day. Are there any further comments? Those in favor of adopting the resolution, please vote aye. 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 Those opposed vote no. The motion carries. The resolution is adopted and Char will sign it. Okay, that was a long agenda. Is there, <laughs> is there any further business to come before the council? Mr. President. Mr. Mosqueda. Um, giving the upcoming uh, uh, tour that the AFL-CIO has invited me on, I would like to be excused on Monday, September 24th, please. So moved and seconded that Council Member Mosqueda be excused on September 24th. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it. Any other business coming for the council? Okay, everyone have a great rest of the day and we stand adjourned. <laughs>